You are listening to The Drive Home on 710 KURV, and uh, we're going to be talking with uh, with uh, the two candidates, the two survivors, the two runoff candidates for Congressional District 15. That's the district held for so long by Kika de la Garza, then by Ruben Hinojosa. Uh, Hinojosa announced he's retiring after 20 years, so we got to pick somebody. And uh, there's a runoff in the Republican primary, there's a runoff in the Democratic primary, the Democrats who are in the runoff, uh, include Sonny Palacios of uh, Edinburgh and Vicente Gonzalez mm-hmm. of, I guess, McAllen. And he will be with us in a little bit. And uh, Mr. Palacios is in the studio, so thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you for the invitation. So uh, now what happens? Yeah, well, what, the I, runoff I is what day? The runoff is what day? That question. One's the runoff and also... The same, the whole cliche question, how do you feel? <laughs> but yeah, how do you feel? Well, we're looking at a runoff in, probably in May 20-something off the top of my head. I don't remember it, but um, I feel good. We feel good. We're in the runoff. We we live to fight another day. Mm-hmm. And that's a great thing. Did you believe there was going to be a runoff or were you we, thinking we, we, I've got we this? Knew, no, we knew there was going to be a runoff. It was just t- statistically impossible. We hoped for no runoff. Uh, but uh, statistically, it was going to happen. Where was your base of support, or where did you draw your most? You were tw- Vicente Gonzalez was forty percent of the vote. 40? Correct. He was forty-four percent. I think I pulled in nineteen, mm-hmm. just under twenty percent. Well, you know, t- traditionally the guy leading into the runoff wins. So how you actually traditionally the guy coming in second wins. <laughs> uh, we, we did we did oh, that really? one. Yes, because uh, uh, they are the ones that fight harder. <laughs> so there every, you go, that's your answer. Yeah, and everybody loves an underdog, harder. and that's how we've been. We've been the underdog in this whole thing. Does strategy and and issues, of stress, presentation change from runoff from regular election to the runoff? Yes, they do. Uh, we, we we start looking at now. You know polling numbers. You see what the precincts did. We see what every uh, area did, and where you were strong, where you're weak, and uh, we've been analyzing those numbers all morning. Does. Does um, the turnout was so high in the Republican Party? It, I'm just assuming it sucked people who would normally have voted. Some of them in the Democratic primary. Correct. Did do you lose those voters? Or uh, from my understanding, uh, if they vote in the Republican primary, they cannot switch no, over for can't. the runoff. So but if it, they had, if it had been for Trump and Cruz and all those guys, would those guys have voted for you? I don't think so. I don't think so. In, the, in that race, what would have happened is there would have been some voters there that. Uh, um, I guess uh, traditional terms were anti Palacios. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so. Trump was your ally? Is that what you're no. <laughs> no, no, Trump would never be my ally. But uh, <laughs> um, what and ends up happening, those voters are not going to be able to vote against me now. Yeah. So. Yeah. They're, they're Republican out. voters. Correct. Okay. They're, they're, or the ones that cross over. So, okay. Over. That's, that's, so if I had voted in the Democratic primaries and I wanted to vote again in May, I could do that. But if I voted in the Republican primaries, I can't vote in the Democratic primaries. Correct. You could, they can vote in the, the Repo- runoff. They can I'm vote sorry. in the Republican runoff, but not in the but Democratic, not in the Democratic runoff. runoff. Correct. Okay. And and there is a Republican runoff. Yes, that, with Tim Wesley and Ruben. And that was that yeah, one surprised yeah. me. People will be. That's what I was telling Davis. People need to understand it's not just the Valley that's running. Oh, I mean, no. we're, District 15 is a long district, and it's. Tim Wesley pulled fifty three, I think, percent of the district. So Correct. y'all need to just really go out there and hit all the way up to Seguin, right? Oh no, and, 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 and we've been doing that. We've been doing that. Uh, and the Republican side, it's 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 been interesting. It's been interesting. Uh, we I didn't expect that okay. race to come out the way it did, especially with the Republican numbers that happened down yeah. here. The fact that we get to talk to you guys again, there are a lot of questions because we had you here in studio, a lot of questions that we wanted to ask but did not get to. So now I'm like, hmm, mm. we get to ask you a few more questions before Tapping elections on, Mon- on on <laughs> May. So I do have one, if I can Shoot. ask you one of question, course. Sunny. Okay, um, this is something I wanted to ask when we had the Congressional Forum with okay. Channel 4. Do you believe in term limits? Because that's oh. the topic earlier today. Do you believe in term <laughs> limits? If so, how many years would you like to work in Washington? I would love to work in Washington as long as I'm effective. Okay. Um, you know, uh, do I believe in term limits? They're, they're called elections, especially in this term, in this uh, day and age. And this position every two years uh, is a finicky public. Yeah. If they vote somebody out, vote somebody in, they're going to vote somebody out. And this family, they've told me myself, we voted you in, we'll, we'll get you in, we'll yeah, get you we'll out, get Sonny. You, out. <laughs> you know about the extended Palacios family? Oh, uh, no, it's my aunt. You have my aunts, oh. my aunts and my sisters. I guess that's all it needs, right? It's the women to... Make the decision, and that's it. <laughs> do do in in um, one one of the things that uh, 
bits of analysis I read was that this is a, an insurgent year. And if you're going to run, you got to be an insurgent. You got to kind of run against Washington. It didn't seem to me any of any of the people in the Democratic primary were running against Washington or no, no, throw, the, throw the bums out kind of thing. No, no, that was that was strange. This was a uh, very um, typical under market race. Um, um, the, what I saw down happening down here in the Democratic Party. It was it's the same boys club, mm-hmm. um, of which I was not a member, <laughs> but it is what it is. We're in the runoff, and uh, we're going to run. So there was no, yeah. there was essentially no new ideas or dynamism or anger or no, not at all, not at all. I mean, there tried to be in some of these debates, and people asked the right questions, but it was pretty much a consensus, and it was pretty much a yes sir, no sir, toe the line type of thing. And um, as much as we tried to make some waves and try to get our point across. Um, Every other debate, uh, when, when I take two steps forward, it seemed like everybody else took two steps towards me, and then I took two, two steps again. They take, you know, I was flattered by mm-hmm. by their mimicry, but uh, uh, it was kind of shocking. Yeah. Let me ask one one question that's fresh, and then we'll switch to uh, Vicente Gonzalez. And, and this is, I almost feel bad doing it, except this is something that you guys will have to deal with if you're in Washington. Bad because it's like not the normal stuff we talk about. Would you be in favor of or opposed to sending ground troops to Syria in any fashion? Anyway? I would be opposed to it. Uh, you know, um, it, it has been said uh, we need to take care of our veterans. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we don't take care of our veterans. And if we can't afford to take care of our veterans, we can't afford to send them to war. It's that simple. Yeah. All right. Well, that's... Any closing statements before we go? Yes, I encourage everybody to get out to vote and uh, let the best man win. Choose wisely. Very people, choose wisely. We want to get rid of politics as usual. Let's choose wisely. All right. All right. That's that's Sonny Palacios. Thank he is you. one of two people in the runoff because you can only thank have two people much. in the runoff. He's, <laughs> thank you for being here. He dragged his 16-year-old daughter along. And I'm pretty sure she wanted to come. <laughs> we'll talk with her after the break. But we're going to go right now to... and, and uh, a lot the same amount of time to the other fellow in the runoff, Vicente Gonzalez. Thank you very much for being with us. We appreciate it. Mr. Gonzalez, you there? Yes, sir. I'm hey, right here. So, uh, so uh, what, do you, what do you think? Let me start off with the one that I just asked Mr. Palacios. It's not something we typically think about down here, but you, you would have to deal with it in Congress if you're elected. Would you be in favor of sending, in any form or fashion, ground troops to Syria? You know, in the right situation, I, I certainly would think it would be the right thing. I hate to have Iran and Russia, uh, you know, controlling what's mm-hmm. going on on the ground down uh, there. And I hate to have another country's lead us uh, in conflicts. I certainly think that the United States uh, needs to continue to be the military leader of the world. And I know me and him differ quite, uh, quite a bit on that. But um, I think we need to have the strongest military in the world. We need to continue to invest in that. And we need to make sure that, they're ta- that our veterans are taken care of when they come home, that they have the health care and the jobs waiting for them uh, after their service. I'll ask you the next question, and I ask this to Sunny as well. It's kind of cliche, but how do you feel about last night's results? Well, <laughs> obviously, I'm very pleased. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're 23 points ahead of the next guy. So, um, uh, you know, we, mm-hmm. we beat everybody. At, we, we've got more votes. we got more than two to one on the next person, all the way down to 10 to one. So I think the people of District 15 certainly came out and, you know, spoke loud and clear. Uh, we've worked very hard. We've met thousands of people. We've, we've gotten our message across, and uh, I think it resonated yesterday at the polls. Yes, ma'am. Well, I also wanted to say, because we get to talk to you again, and I mentioned this to Sunny, we have a lot of more questions we get to ask, so I'm going to take advantage of that, Mr. Aye. Gonzalez, sure, and ask sure. you this question. <laughs> um, do you believe in term limits? If so, how many years would you like to work in Washington? Um, well, you know, everybody's a little hesitant about term limits. I'm not, you know, I think a point, there's a point in time when, when it's time to go. And, uh, I don't know exactly what that, what that number of years would be, but you know, these folks that are there for 30 years, it's certainly, you know, I think you've certainly exceeded your welcome and, mm-hmm. and it's time to let some new blood in and let them do what they need to do. Um, now, uh, having said that, the, the way Congress works is, Seniority gives you more authority and seniority gives you more influence. So the longer a congressman is there, the, a lot of times, the more they're able to do for their district. Um, but so we need to find a balance between the two. And we need to find a balance uh, between people that are just there too long. And, and uh, it becomes more of a, more of a gig for themselves and for, than for the community they're there to serve. I'm obviously not doing this 
uh, for a pay raise. Um, I'm here for District 15 and, you know, the South Texas that I know and love and and uh, try to continue to provide for our community and make sure our seniors, uh, they have their Medicare and Social Security is conserved and med- make sure Social Security is not privatized. And, and I'm, you know, a big fan of veterans. I'm the son of a Korean War uh, veteran. And, and I think we need to take care of our veterans and make sure that when they come home, they have the health care and jobs and education that they've earned. Um, you know, we have border issues and we have educational um, issues that are very important to me. And, uh, you know, I'm going to continue to work on them when I get to Washington. I was I was talking to Sunny earlier and we were saying how it's not just the valley, you know, that's voting for this district. It's it's all the way up into Seguin, I think yep. it is. It, it, yep. I mean, it's that's big. Right. So what are y'all doing um, to get to the other voters across this district? Well, I've I've visited every single county multiple times. But we've established relationships in every single county. We have people on the ground in every single county. Um, we need to have a very open channel of communication and, in fact, have some representatives from my office. Uh, in each county and, and with direct communication to the people and on the ground. And, and when, if they have an issue that needs to get resolved, I want to know about it immediately. And I want to be able to take action in an efficient manner and, and uh, in a way that people in Congressional District 15 will be proud of. Wouldn't it, well, I was going to say, wouldn't it be better to have a more compact Congressional District? We'll leave, we'll... It, 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 I, think, uh, I think it would, uh, just from a logistical point of view. It's uh, very difficult when you have to travel four and a half, five hours to get to one side of your constituents. I mean, I love the good people of all over my district, but yeah, if it was more compact, I think it would be more practical. Uh, you guys for, have to buy, if you're going to buy radio or television, you have to buy in the Rio Grande Valley, you have to buy Corpus, you have to buy San Antonio. It's awful. Yeah. Even, I think there's even, we have to buy Laredo, like Freer is Laredo, San Diego is Corpus, Valfurius is Corpus. Um Obviously, down here, we're in the Rio Grande Valley. Then we have uh, San Antonio. And, uh, yeah, there's four markets. I have to for, believe that uh, district was drawn, at least in part, to incent uh, Hispanic representation under the Voting Rights Act. And I'm getting way over my pay grade. But I always, I always thought it was ironic that, it, that to do that, you had to give, give the candidates four media markets, which is just – it really knocks uh, out the, the guy who doesn't have cash. Yeah, it's certain. There's something that's certainly uh, uh, unfair about the way it, it certainly seems like something's not fair the way it was drawn. Um, you know, I wasn't involved in politics at the time that this district was drawn. In fact, I'm not a politician. This is my first time in politics, so I wasn't involved in the drawing of that district. But um, certainly down the road, I'd like to do something that is more conducive and that's more helpful for the constituents and and to assure that they have the right congressional service and uh, the right attention in Washington. I think many times when they have to travel five hours or four hours to an office uh, to be able to get the attention that they mm-hmm. require, it's it's tough for both constituents and the congressional staff. Mr. Gonzalez, we're almost out of time, so do you have any last remarks before we go? Well, you know, I want to thank all the supporters. We've had overwhelming support. We've had a lot of people come on board, uh, even just today and last night. Obviously, our, our circle has grown, you know, tremendously. I want to thank all my supporters. I especially want to thank all our seniors and veterans that went out to support our campaign. Uh, We'll be fighting for you every day in Washington. I have a plan for the first two years of college uh, for our our high school graduates to come out of college tuition free. Uh, We've been we've had a lot of support on college campus. We've had a lot of support from our veterans, uh, our senior citizens. And, and, you know, I'm very grateful and I'm very grateful to the community. I'm very grateful to to the media and you guys that do your work and are able to help us get our message across. Well, let me, I'm very thankful. Let me, let me break in there. That's a good place to, uh, to leave you or for mm-hmm. you to leave us. Uh, Vicente Gonzalez, thank you very much thank for you. your time. Good luck. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Vicente Gonzalez in the runoff for the democratic nomination for congressional district number 15. And, um, you have uh, yes, until that. May, I think you said May was the runoff election, May, which I think is just weird. So we'll be having both running. of them on again. Because people are going to forget. The voters are going to forget. You know, they they give. I thought it was always a month, but you know, by the time you get to late May, what are you doing in late May? School's getting out. People are making vacation preparations. People are in utter chaos because school's getting out. Mm-hmm. They're not thinking about elections and. Um, But they didn't ask me. You're listening to 710 KURV. This is The Drive Home.